All right, today's lesson is on square roots and perfect squares. Square roots and perfect squares. So first we've got to review, to start this off, what does it mean to square a number? Definitely something we've done before. Okay, but first of all, squaring a number looks like this. You take a number 4, that's the base number, and then you take it to an exponent of 2. So we, we call this 4 squared. We would call this one 7 squared, and this would be 3 squared. Okay, what does that actually mean to square a number? Well, if, if you look at the example of 4 squared here, it means we're doing 4 times itself. How many times? 2 times. Okay, so 4 times 4. You're taking the big number times itself, however many times the exponent tells you to. In this case, twice. So it's 4 times 4, which equals 16. 7 squared would be 7 times 7, which equals 49. 3 squared would be 3 times 3, which equals 9. Okay, so squaring a number. So square root, then, is what we're talking about today. And square root is just the opposite of squaring a number. In the same way that addition and subtraction are opposites, or multiplication and division are opposites, uh, squaring a number and taking its square root, those are opposites of each other. And this symbol right here is the square root symbol. When you see that, that's your cue to go ahead and take the square root of a number. Okay? So how does it work? Well, let's say we have the square root of 16. All right, if we have the square root of 16, what that's telling us to do is to ask ourselves, okay, what number could we multiply, multiply times itself and the answer would be 16? So like, what number can we take times itself to get 16? The answer, of course, is 4. So that's it. The square root of 16 is 4. Because if we were to go in reverse, 4 squared would be 16. So they're just opposites of each other. Okay? If we took the square root of 25, again, we're asking what number could we multiply times itself to equal 25? The answer is 5, because 5 times 5, 5 times itself, equals 25. Just a few other examples so that we uh, really hammer the concept home here. Square root of 9 would end up being 3 because 3 times 3 equals 9. The square root of 100 is going to equal 10 because 10 times 10 or 10 squared equals 100. And the square root of 4 is going to be 2 because 2 times 2 equals 4. Okay, this concept gives rise to a series of numbers that we call perfect squares. Perfect squares, okay? And perfect squares are numbers whose square root is a whole number. So all the examples we just talked about are perfect squares. I'll give you a few more examples. Uh, let's see, 49 is a perfect square because the square root of it is 7. Uh, 64 would be 1 because the square root of it is 8. 81 because the square root of that is 9. Numbers that would not be perfect squares would be any number other than those. So 50, that'd be an example. 55, not going to work out. Uh, 61, not going to work out. There's tons of examples of numbers that are not perfect squares. There's far more numbers that are not perfect squares than numbers that are. Here's a list of the first 13 perfect squares. The first 13. Now you should be able to come up with these pretty easily on your own. And let's talk about the pattern that would help you do that. So the first perfect square is 1. How do we know it's 1? Well, because 1 times 1 equals 1. Okay. The second perfect square is 4. Why is that? Because 2 times 2 equals 4. The third one's 9, because 3 times 3 equals 9. The fourth one's 16, because 4 times 4 equals 16. 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7, 8 times 8, 9 times 9, 10 times 10, 11 times 11, 12 times 12, and 13 times 13. We could keep going with this, but these are the only ones I would expect you to eventually have memorized. You really probably ought to be able to memorize those, um, just like your times tables, 
it's just easier to memorize these and to have to keep looking them up every time. It will really help you. Okay, so there you go, the first 13 perfect squares. So if we took the square root of any of these numbers, we would get a whole number. So square root of 169 is 13. Okay? One final concept here. Can you take the square root of other numbers, numbers that are not perfect squares? For example, what if I tried to take the square root of 10? Okay, 10 is not a perfect square. So what if I take the square root of it? Can, can I even do that? The answer is yes, I can do that, but I'm going to need a calculator to figure it out. This is not something that <clears throat> you will actually ever be expected to be able to figure out on your own, certainly not all the way through grade school or high school math. Um, so you need a calculator. If you do take that uh, square root of 10 on a calculator, you end up getting 3.162277666 dot dot dot. It will go on forever and ever and ever. Okay? And that's going to be true of any number that you try to take the square root of if it's not a perfect square. You're going to get some long decimal that goes on forever and ever and ever. Okay? So can you take the square root? Yes. But you need a calculator and you're going to get some really weird answer like this. Okay? All right, that's the lesson on square roots and perfect squares today. Don't forget to answer the question in the description, and we'll see you Monday.